What's good, everyone? Hopefully, y'all doing well today and been having a good week so far, right? Nice, beautiful morning. Let's get to this. Have you ever wondered why we never really explored the, the oceans? I have, man. You know what I mean? Besides this music stuff, you know what I mean? I do have a mind and think about some other stuff, too. I'll come across some other stuff that uh, captures my attention or that I have wondered myself at one point in time. You know what I mean? Or still does wonder, right? Because all the videos that come about in YouTube, you never know. So it gets you wondering, gets you thinking. Even some sort of new evidence, people's own theories. So it's kind of a trip sometimes, you know what I mean? Well, they check this out if you're ever curious. And I've never seen this. Why haven't we explored the oceans yet? Why? Right. The Earth's oceans contain roughly 321 million cubic miles of water, which is trillions upon trillions of gallons of liquid, stretching across more than 70% of our planet's surface area and amounting to roughly 99% of the Earth's total living space. And yet, there's still so much we don't know. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, why haven't we fully explored the oceans yet? Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like You're this one, one and ring the bell for more fascinating content. I'm a curious one. First off, why should we even care about what happens like in the oceans right. at all? These vast waters can seem like cold and empty, inhospitable environments threatening hidden dangers, but they're actually key to understanding our planet. Like rare plants found in the rainforest, there could be, and probably are, millions of undiscovered species living down there, which could change what we know, or think we know, about biology and evolution, as well as general sea life and life on Earth. For many, the uncharted plants, animals, and environments can mean only one thing, sea monsters. Taking the big fin, or long-armed squid, as an almost alien-like example of something we do already know about, is it so hard to believe oh, yeah, that there'd be other enormous creatures thriving in parts of the sea human eyes have never seen? The biggest animal we're aware of is the blue whale, but we only know so much about it because it stays close to the surface to breathe. For animals evolved to live in the deepest, darkest depths, some argue they could be even bigger. It's certainly an idea embraced in mythology, with creatures like the Kraken, the Leviathan, and the Hydra showing up in stories and texts for centuries. But it's also something that even science can't entirely disprove, because so much of the ocean remains uncharted. As recently as 1997, ocean experts were left scratching their heads by the bloop, a loud, low-frequency, and unexplained sound detected deep underwater. The devil trying to come out too, man. Some said the sound was made by an impossibly nah. huge sea creature moving. Others have speculated that it was simply shifting sea ice, but no one knows for sure. That's not to say that simply monsters is the reason humans haven't charted every inch of the underwater world. A lot of it rests on a lack of enthusiasm, and therefore technology, to do so. Arguably the result of a human tendency to look outward, toward the stars, rather than inward, at the bottom of the sea. Right, Oceanographers argue that the biggest roadblock for sea exploration is space. Despite the universe being incomprehensibly huge, we know much more about what happens out there than down here, spending much more time, money, and effort to do so. We've mapped 100% of the lunar and Martian surface, and around 98% of our second closest planet, Venus, but only 5% of our own seafloor. There are valid reasons for this. NASA used radio waves to map other planets, but radio waves can't be used for the sea because the water gets in the way. Mapping the ocean floor requires sonar, which, though the tech does exist, is a much slower process. During the search for a Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, for example, the sonar used was so advanced that massive active volcanoes, deep trenches, and other geological features were discovered for the first time while trying to locate the plane. Unfortunately, it often takes a tragedy like this for such a thorough and detailed analysis of deep sea areas to even happen. Ocean authorities like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration simply don't have the funding to explore the ocean on a large scale. Compared to NASA, NOAA feels extremely right? low profile, and that's reflected in their budgets, with NOAA pocketing around $6 billion in 2018 and NASA more than $20 billion. According to the University of New Hampshire's Larry Meyer, total sonar mapping of the sea could cost only half of what NOAA gets given, and around the same as a single mission to Mars, around $3 billion. But there just isn't the willingness to spend such massive numbers on the project. All of which means that most underwater mapping is actually done by private oil companies looking for places to drill, 
which represents an unfortunate irony for oceanographers as underwater drilling can spell disaster for ocean environments. Those hoping right. to increase deep sea exploration argue that it would actually benefit us far more than space travel anyway. Even if we did discover something exciting like so. alien life elsewhere in the solar system, we might not be able to make contact for centuries. Meanwhile, there's an arguably greater chance of immediate life-changing discoveries at sea where the research field is comparatively closer, smaller, and more manageable. While it's 239,000 miles from here to the moon, the furthest depths of our earthly seas, Challenger Deep and the Marianas Trench, are just seven miles away from us. And humans have already been there, with the first ever manned submarine journey to the Challenger Deep happening as long ago as 1960, nine years before the moon landing. There are problems beyond the simple lack of funding and apparent lack of enthusiasm, though, namely depth pressure. While space travel deals with a distinct lack of pressure, the pressure is immense for deep sea missions. According to NASA, the pressure at Challenger Deep is a thousand times greater than on land, and the same as if you tried to hold 50 jumbo jets on your own. But that is the extreme case. On average, the ocean is only 2.3 miles deep. The conditions are still pretty perilous, but not at the same kind of level. If we took the time to source the right location, then we could feasibly build an international sea station as an underwater counterpart for the ISS in orbit. The near total lack of sunlight would make it almost impossible to carry out some tasks in underwater bases, like growing plants for example. But there would be some benefits compared to outer space living too. At its coldest, yeah. the ocean dips only just below zero degrees Celsius, while space is minus 270. So underwater heating systems would be under much less strain. It'd also be easier to send supplies to and from an underwater base since it's only a few miles in a submarine compared to a few hundred in a rocket. And those actually based underwater could return to land fairly often, while it'd be an arduous journey for anyone in a moon colony. <laughs> Finally, if we That's did open up our oceans, then we could even find another solution to various global concerns like climate change and overpopulation, underwater cities. Currently, there's clearly a much greater emphasis on moving to Mars than on colonizing the Atlantic. But if we relocated the water en masse, it'd at least buy us some more time to reevaluate our lives on Earth and give us a greater first-hand understanding of sea and plastic pollution. In the long term, such a move could even give us more time to tweak our space travel strategies. People try to sneak in all the time. Yeah, right. Perhaps NASA <laughs> and NOAA share a common goal after all. Whether or not we do eventually explore the entire ocean largely boils down to money and motivation, and whether there's enough of either. There are mysteries to solve, species to discover, and wide-reaching lessons to learn. But right now, we're impeded by inexplicable disinterest and an unfortunate lack of funding. And that's why we haven't fully explored the oceans yet. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content. Right. So as you guys saw, you know what I mean? My thing is, they always bring up like, okay, about the pressure part when they go underneath and down the ocean, right? But it doesn't have to be a person going down there. Can it just be like some sort of like a, uh, I don't know, think about it like a big ass like Tic Tac, right? Sort of, sort of say just like a, there's a sort, sort of tool, right? They'll handle that sort of pressure. Let it go as far down as it can before it either you can set the time or whatever. So before it kind of like uh, knows it's about to erupt because of all the pressure and all that sort of thing, make it do like make it uh, make it like make it flash like a light. And as soon as it does that, take some like a gang of pictures. Like it's so it'll be like a camera going down there. Once it flashes the light, it takes a gang of pictures, sends that up on uh, Wi Fi, so to say, to wherever, and then we get to see what's really down there. You know what I mean? I'm trying to send people down there just try to see, get some visuals and with the, some light like that and a few pictures. Why not? I guarantee there's structures down there. Imagine freaking dinosaur dead bones, a gang of human bones, ships, airplanes. You know, depending on where, right? I'm guessing on the section, but imagine human history, like the old school boats, you know, and God knows what else they probably built, rafts and all this sort of things. But also, too, you know, see live creatures. I'll be interesting, man. We could probably, like, see uh, what's down there, what type of creatures. <laughs> but imagine that in the pure darkness. Something comes down and then bah, the light flashes. You know what I mean? Where it's like, what the? F you know what I mean? When the light flashes, but we get to see pictures of that. I'll be some crazy stuff, man. But what do y'all think about that? You know?
Should we explore more the ocean than space? I, I, I always had agreed with that, and I always um, thought about that too. So it came around actually that missing plane sort of video that made me get into this, to doing this sort of video. But um, but yeah, feel free to check it out if you want to. I'll put the link up there in the description. Much love and respect. Until the next one, all right?